Hi everyone and welcome to Leftover Week. It's not like you're interrupting or anything, but we are looking forward to today's festivities because we're filming on the 1st of spring in Australia, which is the 1st of September. So I've got a beautiful bunch of flowers that mum has sent me down for the day. And we're just really looking forward to celebrating the warmer weather coming, the flowers all coming out, and also going to be able to get out and see a few friends, which in Victoria at this time of the year has been a bit of a challenge for us, but it won't be too long now. I also got a beautiful bottle of champagne that Kate's brought down to celebrate and we're going to make it a fun day. First of all though, before we get to have some fun, I want to show you what we have been up to over the last couple of weeks. When I say we, I mean I, trying to get some sewing done to show you some progress on the projects that we've been doing during the Craft and Cook show. So let's run through a few things for you and I can show you where we're at. First of all, We've been talking about these beautiful metallic frames and this is a new one that we have. So that's beautiful silver and they do come in gunmetal grey and antique gold as well. So these have got a lovely little hinged handle on them and they open up at the top. So what we're going to do with these, I'm going to make a couple and then I've got a really nice generic pattern that I can put in the handles with the handles when we sell them. So this is one that I have started and this is what I call my basic prototype bag. So if you have a look at this one, I'm just making it with one fabric, no pockets or embellishments or anything, but you can see this one's going to have that wrap around base and sides technique that we did in the fourth show. So this is probably a good way to give you an example of a combination of different things that we've done during the show. So I'm going to get this one finished. Oh, and I want to show you around the top. You can see that I've got some pegs on here at the moment. Now, one little trick that I have learnt is they're much easier to set into the frame and sew as you go if that top edge is secured really well. Now, I can just do that with some starch, but I think what I'm going to do is a little stain stitch, and I'll do that on my sewing machine for speed with my walking foot and the longest stitch that I can get right up near the top rim and then we're going to see how much easier it is to set it in. So that's going to be the prototype one and then the next one is going to take in what we did in show number three. So I'll get Kate to show you these up close. So first of all we talked about ombres and we talked about ruching. So that's one side of the bag. So I've actually used the same fabric for the background. And as it's got lighter at the top, I've used the lighter section of, for the stems. And you can see it's all contrasting, but it's exactly what's well, all from one fabric. Now, I just used a bias maker to make the stems on this one. And while they look okay, I thought they'd even look more effective if they were thinner. So if you have a look at this one, I'm look at that one, okay. They're even thinner again. And I think proportionally, these ones are going to work better. I'll use them both for the front and back of the bag. What I did for these, I made my bias strip and then I put it right side down and I sewed right on the edge of one of those stems and flipped it over and uh, slip stitched it down. So if I hold that up there, you can see my slip stitching on one side. Now I haven't ironed this yet, but when I do, it'll even it all up. We're going to have a show that's all about how to make bias and stems. So we'll come back to that again if you don't quite get what I'm talking about for the moment. But I'm happy with how they have come up. Okay girls, so we had to just do a little bit of a cut because we're filming on a Tuesday instead of a Monday and the garbage trucks have just gone by. So one of life's challenges. Um, but now for the flowers for this bag, back to the ombre. So if you remember, we had a lovely play with these in show three as well. And they have so many different uses, so many we haven't even touched on yet. But we did spiraled flowers in that show. And what I am doing for the flowers on here is making lavender. So these stems will be the base of my lavender. And if you can have a look, I've taken the long strip, but I have done little ruched sections instead of the whole strip for the time being. And then what I'm going to do is actually cut these down in between, tuck their little tails under, 
and tack them onto the end of the stems. So I'll do that on both sides of the bag and I'll bring that back and show you in a couple of weeks with the bag all complete. Oh, the frame for this one, look at these. These are just beautiful. So I'm going to use a really strong contrast and use the gunmetal grey for this particular bag. As I go through and look at the different handle colours that we're getting in against the fabrics, I'm finding that the gunmetal is going to probably give you the best option if you're doing non-metallic fabrics. The antique gold's good, the silver doesn't really work as well unless it's metallic with them. Maybe even a shiny silk or something like that will look really good with them. But the gunmetal is very, very versatile. This is the point where I do say as well, I have set up a brand new email address for you so that you can contact us directly about anything you see on our YouTube channel. So it's lisa at lisachandler.com.au. So it's really simple to remember. And we'll pop that up on the screen for you if you wish to write it down. And we'll stick it in newsletters and on Facebook for you. But that's going to be the best email address if there's anything particular about what you see in the shows that you'd like some more information on. And that's going to come straight to me. So I'll be able to give you the best answer as quick as I can. All right, we'll move these out of the way. Uh, I wanted to give you an update on my mirrored Suffolk pups. So have a look at these. This is going to be so much fun. So the colours I was working with last week were chosen to go with this fabric. Now this is a flashback. This is Passage to India that was about seven years ago and I stashed big time. I stashed five bolts of this particular purple paisley. I've been waiting to find projects that I want to run with it and so now I've decided to eat into some of that stash. Um, and use it to make some new handbag kits and a new handbag design. So with these, you'll see that I've done larger ones and I've popped the little mirrors on the inside. And then I've done smaller ones that I'm just going to run as a Suffolk puff and probably pop a gold bead in the middle. But they're going to be great fun. Um, I'll have more information about this kit for you, but again, you can contact me through that email and find out when it's available. We've also got the mirrors as well, if you're interested in the mirrors. So, see, this keeps me accountable to make sure I get all of my homework done. Speaking of homework, I have finished my purses. So, these are the ones that we started off in show three. Can you see those? So, I've finished all four. So, you can see all the different uh, coloured frames. And um, all of that gorgeous stock has arrived as well. So, they're now available. And uh, these have taught me a lot about how to work with the frames as well. With these small ones, it is quite difficult to use anything to clamp them on with, but if you've got a couple of pegs or clips that work, then do use them. With these larger frames, these are getting to the size where you can actually use bull clips to clamp um, the actual bag up into them. But look, these aren't too hard, and I find a cuppa and a phone call with a friend on speaker, and I get one done without even realising it. So, the other two things I wanted to show you is again my homework and how I'm going with my blue quilt that we started on with pre-shaping last week. This so clashes with the orange and the green on the table today. So if you can have a look at these, this is where I'm at. So you can see this quilt is slowly starting to come together uh, with those long ones. This one still has its markings on. And then I've got quite a few, in fact, I've got all of the ones done now. That are going to mix and match so you can see i'm going to have a long one and then i'm going to have one or two small ones and mix them all up i will keep the shading going the same way so it will always go from top to bottom and then in between i'm going to run a cream right through and i'll probably quilt it in a variegated pale blue so I will endeavour to keep going with this and get that done because that's for our new Charm Square packs. So that is definitely on the priority list. Okay, now the one big thing that I did get finished this week I'm wrapped with is my fans that I started on with the pre-shaping. So I'm going to lay this right over the top so I can show you. Now next week you're going to get a sneak peek available on sweet bathroom that I'm working on I need to get Rob to put some hooks up for these so what I did I actually ordered online and they weren't expensive I think they're about $10 each 
these little box frames so they are that big they're 30 centimeters square and instead of putting a print inside them I have done these so this takes in pretty much everything that we did last week so I have cut out the motifs off my fan fabric so there's the one there that I have cut down and we pre-shaped around the template as we did in last week's show we also talked about how effective it would be to use tiger tape to uh, get a really nice parallel line of even stitching and it worked great girls so please give it a go I know a lot of you picked up some tiger tape last week for that purpose so I've padded it out a little bit I'll hold that up for you there so you can see I've given it a nice squishy bit of padding in there and then I made some of our little cherry blossoms so pre-shaped and pulled in the petals they have some beads on the inside um, it was really easy to slip stitch on and I've done that little running stitch and whip stitched it around the fans as well then I've used a triple stitch on my banana and you see that there for my little stems I could do that with a stem stitch or more whip stitch but I wanted to get it done to show you so that's that one and then this one I've done a little differently so this is the round one you can see here off the fabric and it was the, the look it still was the best way to get the perfect circle on top of that these motifs have a line of silver metallic around them so I could double check I had exactly the right shape when I was slip stitching my pre-shaped circles on they're padded out I used the triple stitch and then what I did down here I did little single stitches with my sewing machine and then I whip stitched on with a silver thread some little beads so this mimics the fur that's um, on that in that pot and this one mimics the flowers in that one so these are now going to go into these frames and I need to make sure oh <coughs> one little thing I learned if you decide to do this just remember that these frames have been designed to have a photo in them not a big thick bit of linen that's going to go right uh, over the edges of all the sides so if you do decide to use something quite thick to cover the boards in your frames then you might need to trim down or sand down the edges of the the board that they give you to put the photos in I just want to put that in a little bit and then I can show you what it looks like in the frame so considering these frames it's not going to work is it because it's reflecting I have to do like that so um, considering these frames are about ten dollars and I've used about half a meter of fabric plus a piece of linen I had at the warehouse this is a great way to make something that's quite inexpensive expensive to hang on the wall so next week we're going to head into the bathroom once Rob's put the hooks up we're going to see these and we're going to talk about what else I'm going to do for some home decorating that also relates to what we um, are doing in the shows next time we're going to do some more curves but I'm going to show you how to create your own perfect curved designs whether it be for an edge of the blind like I need or to create your own beautiful bias work designs and your own quilting designs so that's what we'll be doing in show number six now that's enough homework for this week I think it's time for us to get out some food to have for brunch and these things I'm going to show you today are just another little extension of the recipes we've done so far in the show okay let's have a look at what I've prepared today that is based on what we've made in some of the previous shows I've gone right back to the beginning and remade our cornbread but this time I thought girls I'd try it in a ring tin and it worked really really well I've popped some parmesan about half a cup and some chopped chives through and then that meant that I could fill the middle of the ring with some antipasto so I've put some sun-dried tomatoes some little pickles and some olives in I think come summer that's going to be a really lovely thing to serve up with a barbecue because it looks impressive 
and I'm going to show you how it looks when it's cut. Now, the other thing I did, I think I'll put it on now, I kept the oil out of the jar of um, sun-dried tomato. So if you want to give it a really nice glaze over the top and drizzle it on, you can. If you don't have any of that, if you just grab some olive oil and put some fresh herbs and some lemon rind and some cracked pepper in, that would work really well also. So I'll bring this round and we'll see how it comes up. So no editing because if, if this hasn't worked, that's just too bad. But you know what I found? Oh yes, that's good. What I found was that because it's not in the loaf tin, like any cake that you cook in a ring tin, it cooks more evenly. So I think it's worked quite well. Now you can't see the parmesan probably on the camera, but it's through there. But I think that means we could get away with putting some chopped feta in or um, some cheddar cheese and it's going to work well. Just remember not to let your ingredients get too heavy or it will flatten out the cake. So that one's worked quite well. Now, the other thing I did was grabbed um, some salmon this morning at the supermarket because I was thinking about the dressing that we put inside the phyllo parcels when we had the sweet potato and the feta and the spinach. And we've made a salad with that and we've used it as a topping for a pizza as well. So I've gone back to that idea this morning and I've used a Dijon mayonnaise. So it's a mix. I've bought it as a commercial one, but it's a mix between a Dijon mustard and a mayonnaise. I've popped the honey in and I've also popped in the juice of a lime with some cracked pepper. So Kate and I have tried it. It is good. So I always have a heap of these jars around to pop preserves in or lemon curd or something like that. But I've just given it a really good shake and I've popped it over some rocket. Now, if you're not a big fan of rocket, it's because it's bitter. So balancing it out with a really sweet dressing uh, works really well. So we've tried that and that's my lunch. I've done two. So Rob gets one too. He's home today. And then the final thing, which... I'm very happy with how it's come out because again, there was no alternative, there was no plan B, is I took our lemon almond syrup cake from last week. We made it in a traditional loaf tin last time, but I showed you last week the fancy tin that I had in the cupboard. It was the original tin that mum used to use to make the cake and it has its benefits. So you can see here, it's all finished off. Because it's a narrower tin, it bakes in a shorter time and therefore it doesn't get too brown and crispy on the outside. What I've done today, I've switched out the lemons and I've used an orange instead and I've added some cardamom. Now ideally with cardamom, if you can get your hands on cardamom pods and grind them up just before you make a cake, you might get a much better flavour because it's really aromatic. Today I just grabbed some dried cardamom powder. So it still smells good. Okay. So I need to lift it out like this. Now there is no easy way to do this, but I wanted you to see how well it's come out. I'm going to pop that on the plate like that. Now again, because it's a sweet cake, it's going to be really nice just with some Greek yogurt over the top. It's got a little bit tart. And then, wait, Kate's going to want me to go right-handed left-handed and we'll just pour that on the top that's the syrup that we made last week but again I've used the oranges and I've added some ground cardamom into it so oh I feel like one of those Swiss shows Kate where they cook recipes <laughs> and they must make three or four just in case one doesn't work so oh, yes. oh, thank goodness for that All right. There we go. So we'll just plate a piece of this up. Ready to have with a cuppa. Yum. And it's, I think it's always nice to add a garnish to the side that's in the theme of the cake. Now I have cheated here. Did you see that? That was a fly. Unbelievable. Must be spring. So I've grabbed one of my caper lime leaves because it's out the front here where we're filming. But if not, an orange leaf, a kumquat leaf, a lemon leaf. So keep it citrus and a couple of wedges. And there we go. So I hope that gives you a couple more ideas and get a little bit more mileage out of the recipes that we've done so far. 
Next week in the show, I'm going to do a roasted pumpkin damper because again, heading towards spring, we need some really nice things to have for outdoor eating. So I'm now going to get a piece of cake and I've got some cool photos to show you that some of our viewers have sent in. So let's do that. Okay. Um, all right, so I've just, I've just tried the cake because that's really important research and it's, it's really good girls. So, to complete the trilogy, Kate and I have decided it needs to be made again with lime and toasted coconut. Which you've got a feeling it's heading towards a summer cocktail as well, so more research will be required. Okay, now seriously, I am absolutely thrilled that many of you have started sending in photos of what you've been making from the show. So I've got a few of them together. If I've missed yours, I apologize. Just send me a rude email and I will find it or resend it to me. But what I wanted to show you was Josette's beautiful frame, first of all. Now Josette has done what I showed you today um, as well, and sort of box frame, and she's made some 3D flowers and she's done a beautiful job of using them to embellish the frame. This is a great idea, and in fact, I've seen Josette's, uh, one of her entries for the Australian Textile Exhibition Challenge, which we hope to get running late this year or early next year for the exhibition. And it's the same style flowers, and she does a beautiful job of making them. So have a look at this, it's great. And if you've got anything like that that you could pop into a frame, whether it be a beautiful uh, photo or print of flowers, and then embellish the outside of it, um, I think it looks really, really nice. Deb Cooper also sent in quite an enviable picture of a, a mass of flowers being made um, that she's going to use to embellish all sorts of things. And these look fantastic. Now you'll see, Deb's actually put them into a tackle box and this is a great little thing to store them in. I either use a fishing tackle box for all my bits and bobs when I'm doing 3D flowers or I'll use a Yazzie bag because Yazzie's a good mate and she's got amazing bags as well. So, have a think about the best way to store yours, but also how you're going to use them to embellish. And remember the other trick I told you, if you've got a block of polystyrene, you can also pin them onto that and get an arrangement going so you can see how they're going to look before you put them onto your handbag, your cushion or your quilt. Um, Deb Burt sent me a glorious photo of her um, phyllo triangles. Now, there's only about one and a half left in this photo, as you can see, um, but Kev, on the positive note, thought they were fantastic and that's all that were left before she could take the photo and she's going to have to make some more. So that's fantastic. I'm really glad Kev liked them and um, there'll be more made in the Burt household very soon. Marie Markham sent this amazing photo. She literally is doing everything that we're doing in the shows and applying it and we've got this great photo. So you can see she's made a great handbag at the back and it's got one of my big Under the Australian Sun Waratahs on it. So Marie, I hope we're going to get that for the exhibition as well because I'd love to show it off. That is a beautiful bag. Also some great little fabric baskets. Um, I'm assuming some great fabrics have been pulled out of your stash and again this is a great way to use them to make some practical little baskets or give them for Christmas presents and I'm loving the 3D flowers, they look fantastic and I hope to see them on a project as well soon. And then finally, oh my goodness, Pauline, Pauline Boykin nearly made me cry because I got this beautiful, beautiful photo of her and the girls together. Oh, I miss you all so much. I hope we get to meet up again soon in the future. Probably at our retreat next year will be the first time. But have a look at this mad lot, will you? They're having a fantastic day. And I am told um, reliably that they were eating some of the goodies that we've made in the show at the time. So thank you so much for the photos. And you can see Pauline's cornbread in full use here with some yummy veggies. Um, and look, that is just great. And I'm so glad that you're enjoying the recipes from the show. So that's it for me for this week. And as I mentioned next week, in the sixth show, the sixth already of the Craft and Cook show, we're going to be working with some gorgeous curves again, but this time we're doing all sorts of things from handbag design, quilting designs, bias work, and also we need to make a blind for my bathroom. So thanks so much, and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful spring, by the way, and um, cheers, and yeah, this is my birthday cake. It's the first of spring. Bye for now.